Welcome everybody. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about uh, a small extension to Swirl uh, that uh, I did together with uh, Martin O'Connor from uh, Stanford University uh, last, uh, last few months. Um, I will mention what were our goals while making it and what were the design choices that we made basing on the, on the goals we had. Then I will uh, shortly introduce you to the SwearLF ontology, uh, which is the core of, um, of SwearLF and show you an example of a Swear rule and then we'll finish with some conclusions. I'll be not going into details in terms of discussion uh, of limitations and um, possibilities of this language because there, there isn't enough time for that but I'm willing to discuss it afterwards uh, if, if somebody's interested. So we basically had uh, one goal and the goal was to be able to express and utilize and there's, it's important here to not only just express it but also utilize it so actually be able to execute those rules and get your um, get the resulting information back into ontology. So express and utilize fuzzy insertion in Swirl using a standard ontology editor. And that was also for us important that we can base on uh, already existing tools that we don't create some separate tools for our uh, uh, fuzzy Swirl rules. It's just that it's a part of, uh, of, for example, well, we based on Protege, but part of some standard editor in general. So general design uh, choices that we made, so first of all, to express the fuzzy knowledge using all classes. So, uh, however, they are, uh, it's not interpretable by the DL reasoner or whatever reasoner you want to use with OWL. Uh, we just represent this knowledge and its, uh, and its meaning is um, it's, it's crisp for the, um, uh, from the point of view of the reasoner when you run it, it just then it's, we interpret it later uh, in the, uh, run, while running the rules. We limit the in fuzzy inference uh, just to rules because uh, this allows us to go around some of the, um, uh, uh, some of the complications that result from if you want to have a, also the fuzzy inference in the ontology, directly in the ontology itself. And the way we achieve it is by uh, using the fuzzy control system scheme, which means so we uh, take this crisp uh, description about fuzz, uh, fuzzy classes from, the, from those old classes with fuzzify. We perform fuzzy inference in the rules and we then defuzzify the results and assert the crisp knowledge back to the uh, back to ontology. So in particular, we represent fuzzy assertion as a, just as an object property. Uh, we were also uh, thinking about the building, but actually it just was more work and uh, looking worse. So we just decided of, uh, on object property, which I will show you in a moment. We reuse already existing rule reasoner, namely fuzzy jazz, uh, to actually execute our rules. So as a fuzzy jazz, is a superset of jazz, so we can utilize all the stuff that was done in terms of the Swirl jazz tab in Protege. And this is basically an extension of this tab. So that's how the ontology looks like. Uh, well, you don't have to look at the curve, it just would serves as a purpose to give an example. So the actual, um, ontology is, is this part. So we have fuzzy sets, so there are plenty of sets it just uh, so, so you can express different types of data. And then we have fuzzy terms, values, and variables that are used to actually represent the fuzzy knowledge. Um, so uh, our motivating example was that we wanted to do uh, some, we had risk assessment problems in oil and gas and um, lots of data that's in oil and gas that actually has some ontological background. So there are some ISO standards uh, that actually are ontologies and this data is described using those. So we wanted to uh, sort of uh, keep, keep this uh, already uh, ontological context and then be able to do some risk calculation on that. And of course we could use math building and so on, but it just was not efficient in terms of doing the definition of this. Um, so uh, the example I'll be showing, so we have, uh, f uh, there, there, there are curves, which basically means uh, it's a set of values um, and they are uh, depth based, so while the drilling goes, they log the data depending on the depth. And uh, in practice, 
uh, it occurs like this that there might be some delays when you get the data uh, then uh, also so it's the time of the delay for how long this delay lasts and how, how big is the deviation and all those three factors they influence the risk that you currently face and this is what we uh, as for now we're using this uh, SWIRL app for. Uh, so we start uh, the definition with a, a fuzzy value. Um, uh, so uh, you can see that uh, sort of fuzzy value um, directs us to the fuzzy variable which, with, it, with which it's related to, so sort of like an implementation of this variable that I will show on the next slide. Uh, you have the, uh, the, the fuzzification method, that's because the fuzzification is uh, uh, implicit, so it just happens automatically, so that's why you have to give this um, data as an input. You have the has fuzzy set, which maybe should be more probably called as an input. If you want the crisp value, you can also use a singleton fuzzy set. And then the crisp value is actually the output that's after the fuzzification, the, inf the fuzzy inference is performed and you get the crisp output back. Uh, into your ontology. Uh, there is this fuzzy variable that you have seen there. Uh, there are fuzzy terms defined here, uh, which, uh, which define uh, what kind of, so then you can use them in your rule as you will see in a moment. You have a caption unit, which is just basically textual data, and then you have the range defined. Um, when you look at the term, uh, you, um, this is one of those terms uh, for, for the curve delay duration, so we have a long one, which is then defined by a fuzzy set. And then you look at the fuzzy set, and uh, as it's a trapezoid fuzzy set, so you define uh, the values to, the, to shape the trapezoid. Uh, this is how a rule looks like. Uh, so uh, I think it's quite simple. So you have this curve that you've seen in a moment. We say that it has a curve delay duration. Uh, and then you can do a fuzzy match on this curve delay duration and say, okay, if it's a short delay duration, that, that means that the risk is low. And then you can have many rules actually influencing the same, um, the same uh, delay duration, generally the same uh, value. And then the, the, um, the final output will be actually defuzzified from the uh, union of all those uh, sets. Uh, yeah, actually, I think I removed the wrong slide. So it was supposed to be the risk here. And then you would get the value of the risk uh, automatically cal calculated. I'm not showing the slides how to particularly use it because it's exactly the same way as to use a standard twirl just that, as it's just an extension. So you don't actually see any difference between using this and using a standard twirl just that. Uh, it looks exactly the same, it behaves the same. Uh, if you don't use this swirl F ontology, it actually will perform everything in exactly the same way as swirl just that. Uh, however, if you start using the Swirl F ontology, all the stuff that you define using it, they actually will be able to, uh, to perform limited but still quite efficient uh, fuzzy assertions. Um, yeah, so uh, to slowly conclude, um, so this extension allows you to construct fuzzy rules in Swirl uh, based on the language variables, so those terms that you define. Um, uh, using the OWL based ontology. It has, I mean, you cannot express everything maybe that w you would like. However, you can, those things that you can express, uh, they work quite efficiently. The general design is based on the fuzzy control systems. So we follow fuzzification, inference, defuzzification. This allows us to avoid the conflicts uh, with, uh, with the main ontology. Uh, so using Swirl F, you can extend any, any current semantic web application with some fuzzy logic capabilities, basing on the Protege and Swirl Just App. And also, as you can use Protege API and you can use JDBC interface to uh, Swirl Just App, you can also embed it into uh, any, any other application that you're creating. Um, there, it is, there is already a link to this on the Protege website if you don't want to download it. However, there isn't actually the package uploaded yet because uh, I didn't have much motivation to clean it up and upload, but it should be there soon. Or if you're interested, you can just let me know and I'll have mot mo more motivation to upload it faster. But the, but the link is already there and it's in, in, in the paper. Um, yes, so uh, if you have any questions.
Yes? People really um, accept the way how you provide the uh, interface for Solar Act. So do they like to work with Poly Rules? Uh, you mean, well, it was just very limited amount of people that actually work with it. So, like, I personally like to work with it. Um, it you mean in general? Um, you mean the way it's implemented is based on the on those it's ontology and Swirl Jest app, or you mean in fuzzy rules in general? Well, you, you motivate a bit with the, the need for, for fuzzy rules because knowledge uh, might be expressed yeah. in a way that, that, that it's fuzzy. Yeah. So the question is now. Who is creating this data? So, do other people like do other people besides you and, and your colleagues work with that? Or do you intend other people to work with that? Yeah, I mean, as for now, it's just me or maybe one other person that's working with that uh, at this point. Um, so it is difficult to say, well, that's why we upload it, and I don't know if there's going to be any interest in it or, or not. And then we'll see what's the reception. So it's impossible to really answer that. As for now, like I like working with it. However, uh, I think that the future will verify whether that's uh, good for, uh, for most of the people. I mean, definitely in the case where you need to specify this kind of knowledge that, well, you could theoretically do using, for example, math building. Because it could be, in most of the cases, actually done by math building. You'll prefer working with this because it will greatly sim simplify the rules. Uh, you will be able to separate the knowledge also then you you can do some limited version of uh, this junction because actually if you use those uh, fuzzy variables you can uh, have several rules influencing the same variable at the same time um, so then it's gonna be a big uh, advantage however if you don't have a case for uh, for using uh, math building extensively in this kind of context, uh, then, well, probably it's not going to be um, uh, useful. But in such a case, as I mentioned, it should be much easier to use it. Okay. Yeah. Time to speak again. Mm -hmm.